at some point in your pet's life, they're bound to experience some GI upset. And as their owner, it's your job to help them feel better. But what's the best approach? For GI upset, there is a specific diet veterinarians suggest that is supposedly meant to help their body recover. What is it? Well, in most cases of GI upset, veterinarians suggest a bland diet of white rice, cooked chicken breast, and a bit of pumpkin. But is this really the best diet for your sick pet? What if I told you that this bland diet could actually do more harm than good, and that there's a way better recipe that you can feed instead? The role of a bland diet is to provide energy and nutrients to your pet while also preventing another GI flare-up. So let's take a look at this bland diet of chicken, white rice, and pumpkin and see why this recipe is so popular. Cooked chicken breast is a cheap, lean meat that's not as rich in nutrients and fat as red meats are. And lean, white meats are usually easy on our pet's gut. White rice is a bland and inexpensive energy source. And since it can bind water in the bowel, this is why it's suggested to feed when a pet has diarrhea. And pumpkin is added to the mix because of its soluble fiber, which helps bulk up the loose stool. Okay, well, where's the problem with this bland diet exactly? Well, let's take a closer look, starting with the rice. Rice may be able to pull water from the bowel to help stop the diarrhea, but it's not necessarily helping your pet's digestive tract recover. First of all, rice is an inappropriate food for carnivores. And additionally, it also ranks very high on the glycemic index, meaning that between the index scale of 0 to 100, with 100 being pure glucose, i.e. sugar, white rice ranks 72. This means when your pet eats rice, the rice metabolizes into sugar, which causes the blood sugar to spike. It's also noted in many studies that elevated blood glucose levels can cause inflammation in the body. So if our pet's GI tract is already inflamed, why increase the inflammation? Okay, well, what about just pumpkin and chicken then? We're going in a better direction with pumpkin because it's very high in fiber, which is needed to help firm up the stool, and it's also higher in moisture. For a pet that's lost a lot of water while being sick, a high moisture meal is a must. But the problem is, pumpkin is actually higher on the glycemic index than rice is. Now, if you're in a pinch, pumpkin can be an okay addition to a bland recovery diet in small amounts, but there's actually a much better option than pumpkin, which I'll show you in a moment. All right, well, the last ingredient is chicken. How could this be bad? It's meat after all. Okay, yes, this is the most species appropriate food in this bland diet, but among all of the animal protein sources you could feed, chicken may actually be the worst one. First of all, when it comes to food related allergies, chicken is one of the top animal proteins on the allergic reaction list. This means if you feed your pet chicken, who happens to have a chicken allergy or intolerance, you could be making their situation much worse. Conventionally raised chicken are also very high in omega-6 fatty acids and very low in omega-3 fatty acids. This imbalance of fatty acids can also cause inflammation in the body. And again, we're trying to reduce inflammation. All right, if this popular bland meal isn't the best for GI upset, what is? Well, basically, a meal that not only stops the symptoms from occurring, but also helps the pet recover. And there are four key things to a diet like this. First, the diet needs to be high in moisture. In situations like this, our pets become very dehydrated, so we need to replenish them. Second, the diet needs to be able to supply essential nutrients through animal protein, but it needs to be meat that's easily digested and can reduce inflammation. Third, a low glycemic fiber source should be included to help stop the diarrhea and firm up the stool. Fourth, you wanna provide a supportive supplement that helps the GI tract heal and recover. And as a bonus, something that adds electrolytes back into the body, since these are essential minerals that are lost when pets become dehydrated. Okay, before you get overwhelmed, don't worry. You can meet all of these with a few simple foods, starting with the base of the diet, the animal protein. And there are two great options you can choose from. The first being rabbit. 
Not only is this a lean white meat, it's also deemed a novel protein, which means it's a great protein to feed if your pet is sensitive to common proteins like poultry or beef. An alternative protein you can feed is whitefish. This can be lake whitefish or something like cod. According to a few studies, fish have a slightly higher digestibility rate than animal flesh, which is likely due to having less connective tissue. So these bland fish are great for a recovering GI tract. Additionally, these fish provide omega-3s, which can help reduce inflammation. Okay, now that we've got the protein down, next is the fiber source. And I'll give you three options. The first is quite high in moisture, which is ideal for dehydrated pets. And it also provides both soluble and insoluble fiber, which helps add bulk to the stool. What is it? Zucchini. However, there is something that pumpkin provides a little more of than zucchini does. Electrolytes. When our pets get dehydrated, essential electrolytes are lost in the body. And as you can see, pumpkin has a little more magnesium and sodium than zucchini does. However, zucchini does provide a little more potassium. But again, pumpkin is pretty high on the glycemic index. If only there was a vegetable that was low on the glycemic index, high in fiber, and high in electrolytes. Oh, there is! Butternut squash. Where pumpkin is ranked 75 on the glycemic index, butternut squash is 51. And along with electrolytes, butternut squash is also higher in vitamin C, which helps reduce inflammation and strengthen the immune system. Now, vegetables are not biologically appropriate for kitties, so a good fiber alternative for them is something called psyllium husk. This is a powdered soluble fiber source that can also help bulk the stool. Okay, this is a great base so far, but we can improve this even further with some digestive support. During times of GI upset, your pet's gut flora is disrupted. This gut flora aids in healthy digestion, so to help build it back up, this beneficial bacteria needs to be added back into the diet. Well, how do you do that? A probiotic source. In humans, research has shown probiotics shorten illness by a day, and that after three days, diarrhea stopped. My favorite probiotic source to feed is fermented milk, also known as kefir. Not only is it tasty and very low in lactose, it's also a good moisture source to add to the meal. And speaking of a moisture source, the last addition to this recovery diet is moisture. This can be as simple as plain filtered water, or it can be something like homemade bone broth. Not only does broth have a natural gut soothing effect in general, but the gelatin from the bones, joints, and ligaments can help reduce inflammation as well. Now, you can stop here, but this next magic gut healer is something I always keep on hand in case of GI upset, and that is slippery elm bark. To learn more about it, watch this video.